Welcome to MicroStrategies Developer Academy. This course is entitled Interactive Grid. In this episode, we are going to learn how to implement and format the interactive grid. The interactive grid widget allows you to display multiple data in a very compact tabular layout on an iPhone or iPad with MicroStrategy Mobile while allowing users to switch the objects displayed in the columns to customize the data displayed. The following procedures provide steps to add an interactive grid widget to a document. Note, there is already a data set loaded containing multiple attributes and metrics. Open the document in design or editable mode. From the insert menu, point to widgets, then mobile, and select Interactive Grid. Click the location on your document where you want to place the widget. The grid graph, which appears similar to a standard grid container, is displayed. A small icon at the bottom right corner of the grid graph identifies the type of widget that you have added to the document. If desired, resize the grid graph by clicking and dragging its handles. From the Dataset Objects panel on the left, select Attributes and Metrics and drag them on top of the widget as described below. Place at least one attribute on the grid graph's rows. The elements of this attribute are displayed in the first column of the widget. I am going to start with one attribute to illustrate the benefit of the toggle feature for metrics then later add more attributes to illustrate options for grouping or selecting attributes. Place at least one metric on the grid graphs columns. The metric values are displayed in additional columns in the widget. I am going to add three metrics and illustrate the toggle feature. To configure the widget, right click the widget, then select properties and formatting. From the options on the left, select Widget. Click the Widget Properties button and you will see the Interactive Grid Properties dialog box opens. To apply banding to the widget, select the Banding checkbox. Banding will create an easier to read format when there are many rows of data. By default, the width of the columns in the widget is automatically determined. To manually specify the width of each column, clear the Automatic Column Sizing checkbox. In the Width Percentage fields, specify the width of each column as a percentage. The widths for all columns should add up to 100. You can allow users to group the data displayed in the widget by selecting an attribute element. As I mentioned earlier, I have used only one attribute in the initial demonstration. When we add more attributes, the option to group by attribute element creates different types of user experiences. You can try variations of the grouping for elements or add selectors to make viewing data by attribute element a somewhat different experience. Try this for yourself by doing one of the following. To allow users to group the data displayed in the widget, select the Group by checkbox. The first attribute on the widget's grid graph is automatically used to group the data when the widget is viewed. To display the widget without grouping its data, clear the Group by checkbox. Try adding a selector for attribute elements, such as year in this example. From the Color Theme drop-down list, select a color theme to use to display the background color, border color, and header color of the widget. You can select a default action, such as drilling on an attribute, opening a reporter document, or acting as a selector to perform for attributes and metrics that have no action defined on the widget's grid graph. From the Default Action Form drop-down list, select an attribute. The action defined for this attribute will automatically be performed when a user taps the value in the widget for which no action is explicitly defined. To enable drilling within the widget, go to Properties and Formatting, then Grid, then select the Drilling option preferred. I will select Drill Anywhere to illustrate the effect on the widget. 
The result will be a drill down to a specific set of data associated with the information in the widget as illustrated here. You can modify the formatting of the drill down information in the Properties and Formatting option. The Interactive Grid widget displays default colors based on the schemes selected. You can continue to format the colors of the data displayed in the same way you would with any grid graph. By going to Properties and Formatting, you can select colors for headers, values, and other options. Here, I will change the color of the values of the metrics for illustration purposes. You can create, rearrange, or delete columns in the widget. To rearrange report objects within the columns, click a report object and drag it to a new location. To add a new column to the grid, click Add Column. The new column is added and displayed. To delete a column, click to the right of the column. The first two columns in the widget are added to the widget by default and cannot be deleted. Click OK to return to the Properties and Formatting dialog box. Click OK to save the changes. And that's a wrap for this model course on interactive grids.